This is a presentation on geospatial web services. <clears throat> My name is Doug Niebert with the FGDC Secretariat in Reston, Virginia. It's an introduction and inventory of specific geospatial web services and their importance to interoperability within the geospatial domain. There are at least three types of geospatial web services, which are just a subset of web-based services that have a focus on geospatial information. The first main type is for data discovery, support search and discovery of spatial data and services. Second type is for visualization. This allows for portrayal or visualization of images of the actual geospatial data. <clears throat> and third set is a set of data access services that provide the end user to actual geospatial data. These three types can occur in a three-tier architecture. In terms of web services, you have the content repositories on the bottom, whether they are features or raster data sets known as coverages. These are made available through services. In the middle tier, uh, in terms of data discovery, we support catalog search. For data visualization, we support web map services. And for data access, either feature or coverage services. This is an example of the geospatial web service for mapping called the web map service or WMS. And the simple interface request for this is shown in the long URL. You would type this in a web browser, basically requesting a get map with the format, the width and pixels, the height and pixels, the names of the name of the layers the spatial reference system, and a bounding box. And so this is sufficient information in a standard request that will actually just retrieve a GIF image. So you could type this into a web browser and you would get back a GIF image as you see below. More advanced JavaScript clients can incorporate this and allow you to interact with DuPan and Zoom and interrogative maps, but really all it uses is this kind of a syntax behind it. Here's an example to request a web service for attribute information at a specific point. Example using the web feature service for Massachusetts GIS, Mass GIS. This is a kind of a request you would define and the response that you would get back. What's shown here in XML are the responses or the structured information coming back on toll booths from the state of Massachusetts. So if you can see on the screen you have a feature member which is a feature and it has a set of properties. Each of the properties has values. So the owner is Massachusetts Turnpike Authority. The location is exit 1. The town name is West Stockbridge. The route is 90 slash 41, etc. So basic information is structured here in XML that can be ingested into a GIS or used in analysis. It also includes coordinates. In this case, it's just a point. It's not terribly interesting. Um, in local coordinates, but it could also be a set of coordinates that define a closed polygon or a line. The typical system, the prior system, was more of a stovepipe system where each data set was coupled to a specific server that was accessible by one client. And as you set up different services or servers and different data sets, each one had its own interface. So it was virtually impossible for somebody with a given client to be able to connect to one or more servers without making special one-on-one -on -one agreements and understanding by building adapters to each one of these solutions. So web services provide some level of interoperability because they standardize the messages that are sent as a request and the format of the response. Otherwise, you know, you have great expense to try and build all these adapters. Interoperability drives the cost down and the productivity up. So how many hours does it take, for example, to transform, translate, and understand free data that you get from the web? So if you go and find a data set and you discover it's in a given format, then you have to learn how to convert that data set into a form you can use for your analysis. It takes a lot of, of time and every data set is specialized. There can be dozens of different data formats. In terms of geospatial interoperability, if you standardize on a small set of formats and a small set of protocols, it minimizes the number of programming choices you have to make. Spatial data infrastructures use web services to access and publish data services and metadata. 
It's important that these are interoperable so that you can interact with other systems worldwide. The Open Geospatial Consortium has a mission to develop standards for geospatial web services. Their vision is a world in which everyone benefits from geographic information and services made available across any network, application, or platform. So they support multiple platforms, multiple formats, multiple environments, and is driven by the provider and user community. Example members of the Open Geospatial Consortium include integrators such as Lockheed Martin and Boeing, software development companies and service providers such as Oracle, Intergraph, Leica, MapInfo, ESRI, and government agencies that depend on geoprocessing as sponsors for the efforts there, including the United Nations, national governments in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Europe, Australia, Asia, etc., and doesn't include membership by universities, consultants, and other smaller groups, different levels of membership that are available. OGC collaborates and works closely with ISO in terms of Class A liaison with the W3C, with IETF and OASIS, the Automotive Mobile Information Consortium and the Mobile Alliance, as well as others. So where it matters in terms of location, then there is a connection between OGC and other groups. Important, relevant OGC specifications here that we'll call SDI Suite 1.0 uh, include standards for data discovery, visualization, and access as shown before, the catalog service with metadata, web map service, styler descriptor, web map context. These all work together in order to visualize data. <clears throat> the web map service is just the portrayal generator as we saw it generating that map of uh, the Americas. Style Layer Descriptor is an XML document that takes feature data, classifies it, and allows you to say, I want to see certain roads in a given color, show it to me that way. Web Map Context will actually share, allow you to share a session with a set of servers and layers and data sources, package it up and send it to somebody else where they could launch it in their browser and see the same view that you, you can see. In terms of data access standards, the Web Feature Service provides access to vector feature data. Coverage Service provides access to continuous coverage data such as imagery and elevation. Geography Markup Language is an XML dialect that allows for the encoding of vector information. And filter encoding is actually used by the other specs such as WFS and Catalog to support a query syntax. It allows you to filter the results of everything in your database. So if you have a number of features, you can say, I want to see only those things that are of a certain type within this bounding box. The filter encoding standard specifies that dialog. Here's a specific example of non-interoperability, where we have three different map services, one from TerraServer at Microsoft, one from MapQuest, and one from EPA. They're all basically showing information about the same place and yet they're in, in three different browser windows and they're not exactly the same overlay or the same projection, I can't put them together. So I can't show environmental information with other information such as imagery without having it all put together for me otherwise in a user interface. By adopting standards, we can have a single browser enact, enabled to interact with all three. <coughs> Here's a web mapping example from Central America where we had data servers established in Reston at the Eros Data Center and at Unit Tech in Honduras. And you can see some of the data layers that are coming from different servers. This was evolved from a demonstration we did in 2001 to show how WMS servers and client can interact. So we have a JavaScript based client here for multi-server web mapping. You start it up and it's, it's empty. You see the layers on the left that are listed that are linked to the different data sources. Each one of these servers is running a web map service interface 1.0 and they're able to put things into the same projection. So what this client is doing is lay, overlaying transparent GIFs from different servers in different places. First example we see here are the WSI Shaded Relief from Reston, as well as Digital Chart of the World Boundaries for the region. 
and zoomed in. <clears throat> And we've turned on from Hurricane Mitch work, rivers and lakes, and a base map from Unitech, from Unitech. And you can see how things are starting to overlay. So the, what came for Mitch came from Central America, mixed with data from, served from Virginia. But it, the browser doesn't care. It goes to both places and overlays them together in, in the interface. Here we add another layer, which are the El Salvador essentially the counties or department, de departamentos, also from, uh, in this case, from Arrow's data center. You can zoom in on that and you can see more detail. So what does this do for you? Well, it provides near instant data interoperability <coughs> to have these web services, especially access through web feature services and coverage services where you're, you're fetching the data which can be directly consumed by your GIS from a web service. So you're only streaming across the data that you need to solve a problem as opposed to downloading all of the data that you need all of the time. There's no more time wasted um, translating files from one format to another because you can access them through a map service or coverage service. It supports web-based services architecture so you can start to perform GIS functions over the web, doing mapping, overlaying, choosing what goes on top, setting transparency. You can loca locate information through catalogs across a distributed environment using different vendor applications and different projections, but because standards underlie the solutions, it allows you to mix and match.